Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA and a QuickBooks consultant. One of my most common questions my inventory type business clients ask me is, hey, how can I use barcodes in QuickBooks, specifically QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise, to manage my inventory better? In this video, we're gonna be talking about doing cycle counts using a mobile device. This is an Android phone with a built-in barcode scanner. This is called the Zebra or Motorola MC40. It's not a great solution, but it's the only known Android barcode combination that works with QuickBooks. So I'm gonna show you if you were to get something like this, how you would do cycle counts, inventory counts in QuickBooks Enterprise using barcodes in order to perform your counts. So let's start by opening up QuickBooks Enterprise here. And I do have QuickBooks Enterprise 2018 or newer for this to work. And it has to be QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum. If you're not sure what version of QuickBooks you have, call my office, email me, and we'll help you sort it out. And we will sell you the version that you will need to get because we are QuickBooks Enterprise resellers. Anyway, we're going to click on the edit menu and then click on preferences. And we're going to make sure that we're going to click on items and inventory and then under company preferences, advanced inventory settings. We have to make sure that barcodes are turned on. So we're going to click on enable barcodes. And this function is so a barcode scanner that you plug into the computer, a USB barcode scanner. It could be a Bluetooth USB barcode scanner. It's enabled for you to add barcodes into QuickBooks uh, from uh, the software itself. There's a tab here called Site Operations, which is actually referring to using a mobile device or a mobile desktop warehouse. So Site Operations actually is referring to this. So in the Site Operations screen, you want to make sure that each of the devices that you have are actually linked to this QuickBook company file. And you can go into the into a website to see how that linkage works. But as soon, as soon as you see a line there that says device and device ID, you're going to have one connection per mobile device that you have. I don't know what the limit is for mobile devices. Now, this mobile device is a standalone phone. It's an Android phone that has a barcode built in. And this needs to have Wi-Fi access. As a matter of fact, your QuickBooks could be in one location. And as long as you have Wi-Fi, it really doesn't matter where your warehouse is and your inventory is for you to be able to use this device. Anyway, as, as long as I have that connection turned on and barcodes turned on, then we'll, we know that QuickBooks will allow us to do what we're gonna show you we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna go into my item list here and we have a big item list. Now normally with my enterprise uh, clients that have inventory, one of the things that I suggest is to group the inventory based on the product type, product category, maybe how they're physically organized in the warehouse to make it easier to do cycle counts. So a cycle count is when you count some of the product and you do a cyclical instead of waiting at the end of the year to count your entire warehouse. So I have three products here that I've created in this sample file. And these three, I'm going to group them together for them to be the same uh, category per se. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit each of these products and then I'm going to go into the custom fields. I'm going to show you, I created a custom field called product type. I created that. That's not built into QuickBooks. And I called it snacks. Okay. So I did that for all three other products that we're going to be working with today. That way we can narrow it down in a search. So I went, so I want to group all my products. You can create a custom field called product type, product name, product category. You can call it whatever you want. I call it product type snacks to group them together. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these barcodes can that these barcodes are correctly registered into QuickBooks in this field that says barcode number. By default, QuickBooks creates a barcode, a bogus barcode as soon as the item is created. So I'm going to delete that barcode and then I'm going to take my USB barcode scanner, not the mobile phone device, a, a separate barcode scanner that directly plugs into the computer and I'm going to scan the barcode so it automatically fills it in this screen. So now QuickBooks knows that this item and this barcode are tied together. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to the next product, right click edit, do the same thing. Let me delete the barcode number here and scan it using my USB barcode scanner. So we can register that product with that barcode, lay that down, and then I'll grab the third product here and we'll do the same thing. Let me delete the barcode number that's there now and register 
there you go. So I got all my three products um, with uh, with barcodes in QuickBooks com com uh, correctly configured. Now, with this uh, custom field that I was talking to you about earlier, I can click on the drop down menu and click on custom fields, and I can tack I can type here where it says look for. I can just type snacks and hit uh, search and it will narrow down and only show me the three products that I use that custom field for. That makes it really, really easy to organize your inventory and understand where it is. Now you can also look at the total inventory on hand there. I got 31 of one, 25 of the other, and 17 of the other. Where that custom field becomes handy as well is on reports. So if I go to reports, inventory, inventory evaluation summary, and then I click on customize report on the top left, and then I click on filters and then I scroll down or I search for product type. And once I find product type, I'm going to click on product type and just type snacks in there and then click on OK. And then the filtering works the same way. So the purpose of the custom field is to make it easier for me to in the item list or in reports to hone down and narrow down specifically the products that I'm working with at the moment. You're going to see one more place where this stuff becomes really, really useful. So this is just uh, overall setup and uh, and setting up how we set up our products before we do a inventory cycle count using a mobile barcode device. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and initiate a cycle count. So we're gonna click on vendors and we're gonna click on inventory, cycle count. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here with the statuses and click on open because I only wanna look at my open cycle counts. Right now I don't have any, so I don't have any active cycle count set up. I'm going to now tell my warehouse personnel to count those uh, three products only, or maybe just two of those three products only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create cycle count. Then it's going to ask me, okay, what is the, the creation date? So that automatically will populate today's date. The count ID would be a number in sequence that QuickBooks will keep. And then assign to, you can leave it on assign or assign it specifically to one of the warehouse people and each of the warehouse people will be able to log in with a different device. So depending on who you want to tell to do the count, uh, you, you can assign it to someone there or you can leave it unassigned. It really doesn't matter. Then we're going to click on find and select items and we're going to have a big humongous item list. Again, if I don't want to scroll down to find my product, I click on custom fields and narrow it down by my product type custom field that I created and then click on search and there's my three products. So let's say, for example, I want my warehouse personnel to only count the first two. So I went ahead and unchecked the third product there. So I only want them to count the first two. It's the only thing that I'm ordering them to count. So I'm going to click on add selected items. And then this creates the cycle count uh, template here. And then at this point, I'm going to click on send to device. Send to device means QuickBooks, go to the internet, and find all the mobile uh, mobile warehouse devices and let them know that there's a pending cycle count. So I'm going to click on send to device and it says the count has already been created successfully. I'm going to click OK. And now it's officially open. So in the QuickBooks desktop software, it's pending and waiting for you to have the new count in there. So let me show you what this is going to look like. All right, so I got my mobile device here, my Motorola MC40, which is the Android device. Let me unlock this and um, there usually is going to be, let me just go on the homepage here. There's going to be a QuickBooks desktop warehouse icon in there, which is going to let me launch the application. And then in by default, it's going to say cycle count, pick, pack, express, pack, ship and receive. So there's multiple functions you can do with this device. So we're only going to be focused on cycle count. So I'm going to go ahead and click on reset here. So it goes on the Internet and finds out how many cycle counts are there. And it says right there that there is one unassigned cycle count. So I'm going to click on that and I have assigned to me. So if I'm the warehouse user, I'll be able to see all the ones that were assigned to me. Or if I click on unassigned, these are all the counts that were automatically numbered and labeled by the QuickBooks uh, software. And I can click on that and it tells me, okay, would you like to assign this cycle count to yourself? I'm going to hit yes. And then it says, okay, go count these two products. So then the warehouse person is going to grab the unit and it's going to start scanning uh, different products and it's going to scan uh, one unit each for each count. So I'm going to start scanning as if I was a warehouse person.
it doesn't beep, but notice that it counted 15 so far. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, and I'm basically pressing it a couple of times, emulating, you know, how many each of the units I'm scanning. So this one scanned 28 times every time I clicked it. And then here's a third product that I didn't assign on the cycle count. I'm going to scan it. And this will give me an error that says, hey, you're not supposed to be scanning this. This is not part of your count. So then the warehouse person knows not to mess with this product. So I get this product out of the way. So then they click OK. And then they keep scanning how many units they have. And then once they're done, they would click on count right there on the phone count and then it says okay we're done counting these two would you like to finish i'll click on finish and then it says are you sure you want to mark this as done yes good job perfect so now back in the desktop software right, the warehouse person called the where the uh, accounting team and said hey i already counted the product so they're going to come back in the screen and they're going to click on the refresh button where it says refresh data let me do here all statuses here so Notice that this is my count 004, and we had one count that counted exactly 31. So we were we had the exact amount in stock that we were supposed to have. And then for the second count, we were short uh, seven right here. So at this point, I can just select these two counts that I want to basically approve to go on and create an adjustment. Then we're going to click on Batch Actions and click on Adjust Quantity on Hand. This will create a automatically create a quantity on hand uh, adjustment transaction. You get to choose the category that you're going to be using to adjust. This will tell me what the initial quantity is and what the new quantity is and the quantity difference. And then I'm going to click uh, save and close. So once I click save and close, I'll click on yes here. I can change my statuses here to complete and I can refresh here or to all statuses. Hit refresh. So these two somehow is still showing as pending review, but these um, have been completed. An actual adjustment was made. So now I can select these two, click on batch actions and close them and hit yes. Okay. If I go back into my item list, I can go list item list. I'll maximize the screen. I'm going to go down to each, any of these products. I'm going to right click on it and click on quick report. And notice that I originally received the bill for 31. There was no adjustment because I counted it and I had exactly 31 in stock. But if I go to the other product, the one that had the adjustment, I'm going to right click on it and click on quick report. And you will see I originally received 25 on um, at, at the beginning. And then we had an inventory adjustment of seven. So now we have a total of 18. So that's pretty much how the cycle count works with a combination of using the built-in barcode scanning feature with a USB uh, type of barcode scanner and using the mobile warehouse device of QuickBooks Enterprise. If you don't have this system, you can call our office and we can give you some advice whether or not it's worth it. I mean, this mobile device in this video looks great, but in reality, it's not that much more functional beyond what we just covered here. But for a lot of companies that don't have that much inventory, this could be a great solution. Um, however, you know, we are inventory experts. We work with a lot of manufacturing uh, companies. If you're looking for some advice on figuring out whether or not QuickBooks uh, Enterprise and barcodes are right for you, just uh, email me or call my office and we'll figure things out. Anyway, I hope you find the video useful and hopefully it works really well for you.